Hey guys, welcome back to the the Corvette C5R Memorial Build for Cancer Awareness Month. I'm still trying to make it before the month is over to see if I can actually uh, get this thing built in time. Right now I'm working on the engine and I uh, just want to talk a little bit about some pre-shading of the engine to create some shadows before you do any of your detailing. Right here I've got the entire block, it's already built. Here we have the, uh, let's see if we can give you a better look at it. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Here we have the entire engine block, the two block halves, the lower oil pan, the front cover, all assembled. It looks pretty good, a really nicely detailed piece. And to have it uh, a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss black applied to the block. Now this black is going to actually create all of the shadows that we're going to need underneath our color coat. So now we're going to apply uh, a coat of thinking of going with the Tamiya titanium silver as it's a silver that I've used on quite a few builds and I usually use it on my engine blocks because it's not a perfectly a really bright clean silver it's got a little bit of yellowness to it which denotes use and makes it makes the metal look a little aged which I kind of like because it just gives it a more realistic appearance than a bright silver clean engine as if it just came off the machine uh, out of the machine shop so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of silver over the black to give us our to give us our shadows over the color so let's uh let's get started on this i'm going to be using tamiya ts88 titanium silver give it a nice shake about 30 seconds worth to really mix everything up now i've read that circular motion while you're shaking up is better than any up and down shaking if it actually is or isn't I don't know but, uh, I'm going to try it now we're going to turn on the extractor fan because we don't really want to breathe any of this crap in there we go let me just give you a little zoom in so we can see a little bit better what we're doing there we go now test break Normally I would do something like this with the airbrush, but I happen to have a can of the titanium silver here. So just to speed things up, because this is a build that under a little bit of a time crunch, I'm going to use a can. Now what I like to do is I like to first spray it very lightly, just to dust it off of the black. Because we want the black to just slightly show through the silver. It's a very quick process and it gives us an extremely metallic look. With the black showing through a thin layer of silver. You don't want to just spray right on. Because you don't want too much of the silver color to overcome the black. Distance. Just dust it on to give it an even coat. But also keeping the black, what I call alive, underneath the silver, which gives it a really, really metallic aluminum look. Which I think this is done quick and easy. Really happy with the way this block turned out. So you can give you guys a really good look at it. That to me looks is exactly the look that I was going for. Now that looks like a solid hunk of aluminum. And like I said, it's not gonna be super bright. Because 
engine is going to get dirty as they race it. And this is pretty much exactly what I want. You can see where the black brings out the shadows. And this is before we do any sort of uh, work with our panel line paint and weather. Very happy with this finish. And it's giving me exactly the look that I want. You can see the texture of the metal as when you spray the paint lightly, it gives a slightly textured effect. try a slightly different color than I normally would use. And I would normally go with just black on this interior, but I figure this time I'll try something a little bit different. I'm going to use this uh, NATO black, which is a slightly grayish tint. And uh, I'm going to see how well this does. Uh, let's just see what it looks like. I'm going to first give it a base coat. I'm not going to try for perfect coverage here. As basically, we just want to apply, we're going to build up color with the airbrush. I'm just trying to hit all the corners right now. Get color on it. And then we're going to go back and get another coat. Oh, I'm liking this color. I wasn't really sure about it at first. But I think I'm liking this color. Said it's uh, very different from what I would normally use. But I am trying to think a little bit outside of the box of this build. And um, just go totally custom and come up with my own paint scheme and all for this and it seems to be working out pretty nicely. I'm not sure how oh no nothing of this is gonna be seen no point of painting that as it's just got a flat bottom and gonna put some color on the sides here I'm not really sure how much of that's gonna be seen. Just in case any of it shows you the real world. We don't have our first coat there, and it's actually looking like a pretty decent color for this material. Didn't want to do just straight up black, and then you don't really see much of it as you look into the car. So I thought that this would be a more interesting color, maybe a little more visual interest coming from it. All right, let's start giving it a little I don't usually do these large pieces with the airbrush, and my airbrushing skills are still not quite where I would want them to be. actually pretty good practice for me. As 
Airbrushing lays the paint down in very thin coats. So less chance of drowning out details as you paint. Which is one of the things I found that I really like about airbrushing. As I get more and more comfortable with using it. You can really get some really nice finishes and effects with it. trying to make sure you get your paint mix correct and honestly I still have a bit to learn on that in that area but you know what they say you're not going to learn to do it unless you do it and I don't have the highest quality airbrush either as this is a learning tool, this brush was a gift and I have learned to really like it. If I get better with it, I will probably move up to a newer brush. But that all comes with time. And here you can see I have the entire chassis painted. scale model recently did a build of this, the RX-7 from Tamiya, which is the exact same build that I'm currently doing apart from this Corvette. And he pointed out how wasteful it is painting with a can. And yes, he is correct to a point it is. And you do use quite a bit less paint I painted this entire thing with just a half a cap, almost a cap of paint. Alright, so there we go. Now we're going to put this to the side of the legs up. And we'll be back with the next step. Alright guys, so the next step. Is I'm feeling sugar. Let's have a chance to set up and dry it. We're going to apply a little bit of to lacquer. It's going to be a burnt iron color. Now this is going to try very, very lightly just to do some shading and darken in some areas where shadows would normally fall. Now it's going to be a very, very subtle as you can see. So you can see what, how much paint I'm actually laying down. Very, very lightly. All we're going to do is add some shadows to the recesses of the block. That's basically it. Just shadowing certain areas. Just to add a little bit of realism. A little more realism to it. A little too much coming out. Just lighten that up a little bit. Make some adjustments here. We just want the tiniest bit of color so that we can gently just darken it in just a little bit. see in the recesses here where light no 
know where you're going to get any light in there. Let's go my kitten. There we go. Just very lightly. In there. Just. bit of color. Not much at all. Well, you're not even going to be able to see the back of the block once the car is assembled. And honestly, I don't even know if you'll be able to see much of much of the front of the block.